This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. More and more each day, we are connected to each other via social media, especially the younger generation. So what role does social media play in our relationships? Is it a help, a hindrance, or a minefield? We put that question to relationship coach Frank Kermit, who is back on the show. He joins us via Skype from right here in Montreal. Hi, Frank. Hello, good sir, and how are you? Just tickety-boo. Thanks again for being on the show. We touched on this topic about nine years ago on the show, but a lot has changed in social media in that short period of time. So I thought we'd revisit this situation. And to answer the question I just asked, is it a help, a hindrance, or a minefield? It depends on how you use social media. Social media, at its core is a way for people to stay connected. It's to let people know what's going on in your life, a way for you to find out what's going on in the lives of others. We don't have the time to always meet up in person. We have obstacles from that happening sometimes beyond our control. But social media is a way for people to stay interconnected and just to keep on top of things. Even if you don't necessarily see somebody's information on a daily basis, if ever you want to see what they've been up to, you look up their social media and you'll get the update you're looking for. So, as a, as a concept, I love social media. Where it can get difficult is, A, what people are posting on social media. Things that they may be saying in the moment because they're angry or frustrated. Will these things come back to haunt them in the future? Well, speaking about haunting in the future, you know, it was back in the day, if you broke up with someone, unless you lived in a very small town or you were breaking up with someone who was working with you, uh, you you went your separate ways, but nowadays people can break up and still be connected via social media, still follow what other people have done or are doing that you were in relationships with. Doesn't that have an effect on any future relationships or could it have an effect on future relationships? It could definitely have an effect. I am going to say one thing that would be a positive. One of the positive aspects of social media is that people are more mindful to try and stay on good terms with an ex. Because once, let's say, a couple has been dating for, um, you know, a little over a year, and they decide to break up at that point, chances are each person in the couple has become friends with the now ex's friends. So they're all linked up on social media. Having that kind of social pressure also reminds the couple, look, even though you are not getting along right now. We all don't want to be involved in your breakup and we just want to stay amicable with everyone. So in that way, social media can be a powerful tool to remind people that if you're going to break up with somebody, you should aim to be amicable. Well, that goes to a deeper question and and that is, is it necessary? And I'm not saying you, you, you be bitter rivals or you fight constantly, but is it necessary to not have a clean break, to simply say, um, I'm not good for you, you're not good for me, let's part our separate ways and, and, and go on in life. We don't need to be in each other's lives anymore via social media because I'm wondering how what effect that has on subsequent relationships. And I'm not saying my feelings in subsequent relationships, but the feelings of my new partner being constantly compared to what I was dating in the past because we're still connected in some way. Okay, this is a very good question, so let's look at some of the options here. Option number one, for some people, they need that break. They need that distance, so it might be wise to say, look, maybe someday in the future we'll be able to be friends, we'll be able to be connected, but for right now, it's too painful, so um, I'm going to block you, so that way I don't have to see anything coming from you, and and vice versa. I'd ask you to block me as well, or don't block me, but I'm going to block you because I need time away to get over us. So that would be one option. Another option is to consider the fact that the only reason that your future partners would feel threatened by your past partners is by the way you behave. If you are constantly bringing up your ex, well, whether or not you're connected on social media, your new partner is not going to feel very good about dating you. And if you have an overly involved connection to your ex, well, at a time when some people may have children, after a breakup or a divorce. They need to stay connected for the sake of the kids. They need to know what's going on with their children. Do they necessarily have to be very linked on social media? 
Well, when you have kids in common, it might be a good parenting strategy. Oh, well, not... absolutely. When when we're, when when kids are involved, uh, that's a given as far as I'm concerned. I'm just talking about people who who were simply dating for a period of time, be it six months, a year, or two years, and didn't have any children, and therefore didn't have any ties beyond their relationship. It can be a deterrent. It can be a deterrent for certain people who say, look, if you're connected with any of your exes, I'm just not going to want to deal with you at all. But is that reasonable? Is that reasonable in a time when you don't abstain from dating and then just wait for your parents to arrange a marriage for you and then that's the only person you've ever known intimately? In a time when people are going to date and maybe over the course of a year have three new exes to add to that pile? Is it really reasonable to assume that a person's never going to have any contact with any ex in order for you to be open to dating them? You're probably using that as an excuse for your own fears of intimacy. Now, if you have trust issues, if you have abandonment issues, then deal with those. What if you have competitive issues? And by that, I mean, uh, let's say person A breaks up with person B, but they still want to find out what person B is doing uh, because... Person A feels that he or she needs to be happier than person B. And seeing somebody happy on social media can really bum out person A. I, uh, assuming person A came to me for coaching, I would bring up the fact that the only person that person A has to compare themselves to is where they were yesterday. That's it. To be better today than you were yesterday and to be better tomorrow than you are today. That's it. That's the only thing you're in competition with. And if somebody else's happiness or failure to be happy has that much of an impact on your life, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You're focusing outward. You need to focus inward for that. In other words, don't let somebody live rent-free in your head. Exactly. That's a wonderful way of putting it. Okay. So uh, one of the things, and, and you know, we're just scratching the surface here, because one of the other things that's that's coming out of the woodwork is is AI. And AI has been involved in certain things like uh, dating apps. And I don't want to go into dating apps now because that's just a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. But people are going on social media and they're using AI to sort of enhance who they are or who they think they are in order to attract a mate. And all I'm thinking of is the story or the play of Cyrano de Bergerac trying to woo Roxanne and uh, getting Christian to speak the words. And it didn't really work out well for Cyrano. As a matter of fact, it worked out better for Roxanne and Christian. So isn't that what AI can do for people? I mean, it, it's another layer of, of a facade to a certain degree. Yes, it is another layer of facade, but let me point out that before AI, people have always, and I don't want to say all people, but a lot of people out there are presenting a false image in order to attract someone because they think, well, I'll use this false image to attract someone, then they'll get to know me, they'll fall in love with me, and then it'll all be okay. And that's not the way it works in reality. See, if you're going to use that false image to attract the person, they're not really into you. They're into the image you presented. And if you can't back that up in person, then when the two of you finally meet in person, and if you're going to have a relationship, hello, you're going to have to meet in person. <laughs> yeah. What so what happens then? This is why whenever I'm coaching someone and they say, well, I've been involved with somebody for X number of months. My first questions are, uh, you know, have you met them in person? Have you hung out with them for any length of time? Well, no, it's an on, it's an online relationship. We've never met in person. And then I break it to them. Well, then you don't have a relationship. You have maybe the potential of a relationship, but no, it's not a relationship. Get together in person. And if the other person refuses to meet with you because they can't live up to this ideal they've projected online, you're being let on. And the only reason why you wouldn't want to meet this person is because you're holding on to the same fantasy. You're holding on to the same level of escapism. People don't have long-term relationships online, never meeting each other because, oh, they're afraid that you know, the other person's going to reject them. They know that there's something going on here that shouldn't be going on. But this is their own means of escapism at play. Don't kid yourself. There's every, Everybody likes to play the victim, but 
How long were you involved in this? How long did you not enforce your boundaries? How long did you wait before you said, look, this is all great and dandy, but let's meet in person? And you tolerated somebody saying no, and then you got into what tends to be a monogamous relationship online? No, that's people running away from real life, not having real relationships. Well, you said it's it's someone who is leading you on. Could it also be someone who, quite frankly, is leading themselves on? That's possible, too. I mean, everybody's got their own issues, and everybody's looking for some form of escapism one way or another. But let's be clear here. We do not, okay, we do not ever or should never allow ourselves to carry on like that, because in the end, it's only going to hurt us. It's only going to hurt the individual who's playing this ridiculous game. So whether you use AI or don't use AI or get somebody else to write your profile or use an older picture instead of a more recent one and all the other things you can do to mislead people, the only people you're attracting are not people who are compatible with you as you are right now. And that's the problem. Now, if you want to waste your time and the time of others, that's a pretty good way. But if you're looking for quality connection if you're looking for a real in-depth emotional bond and by the way that scares a lot of people a lot of people are terrified at the idea of actually getting involved with someone maybe you've been hurt maybe you just don't feel you're worthy enough maybe you don't feel you're good enough maybe you don't feel you're lovable it could be a host of reasons but if you want something real you're better off just being brutally honest about what you have to offer the things about yourself that you think others may not like and look to connect on that level. It might take you a little longer to find someone, but when you do, that connection will be magical. Frank, always words of wisdom. I thank you once again for being on the program with us yet again. And I look forward to the next time. All the best, sir. Relationship coach Frank Kermit. You can check out his website at franktalks.com, and you can go to my website at thestufffile.com, check out the show number for this program, which is show number 0706, and you'll find the link to his site. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.